So this is part nine of my um, series of tutorials about GMAX and making models for trains. And I just wanted to show you that after all of the um, bits and pieces that were done with the uh, on the viaducts of moving those planks into the correct position, you'll see that there is no gap now where the two meshes join, the end mesh and the main mesh of the start and stop position and, uh, and here it is of course in position on one of the uh, uh, one of the crossings of the little rivers on the South Devon Railway and I've just got to replace my uh, the conventional track here I'm just using I was just using Oran default track uh, I need to come down here to where is it uh, the atmospheric. I can't remember what I called it now. Uh, there we are, Atmosfer SDR atmospheric, and so it will be with uh, brown, or sorry, with grey ballast that I'll be. I can just attach it to that and stick it there. But I'll delete that bit and uh, just straighten that a bit. And and that one that to me. Let's see. Smooth sky height. There we are. So um, this will then run on to um, up to the edge there. This is the, my own ball gauge track with the atmospheric railway tube running down it and I should add the one without ballast onto the bridge and the, that's the one we want anyway we just need to adjust so just get the spline height there and the flight over here. Let's get the bottom. It's 3.85. That's getting close to what we want. But you get the drift. Pretty straightforward. Uh, usual track lane fun with the trains. Try and get it all lined up. I don't really want to, I could have incorporated the track into the viaduct, but I didn't really want to, I wanted to keep the flexibility, being able to use the viaduct for um, other things, and then if we just select the other grey track again, and bring it in, there we are, and just adjust where that spline point is, Bring it onto the bridge. So our little atmospheric train can run over there. I'm not sure if I've actually got it loaded into um, trains 12. There it is. That's the little piston carriage uh, that ran on the South Devon railway. I put a driver at each end because I often ran singly. And you can see there the piston dropped down into the tube. And you can see the glazing on this one very clearly. Uh, also got some wheel showing through there that I should have boxed in. Oh no, they are, they are, okay, it is boxed in, okay, yes. And, um, so this actually demonstrates some of the aspects which I've been um, mentioning uh, in my previous tutorials. I've got a figure there that's added in as an attachment. I've got the one, two, three bogies, um, and the body, of course, with windows which are glazed, apart from the one in front of the dryer, which apparently wasn't glazed. And these are all essentially quite basic meshes. 
and this one is textured with a teak finish polished teak finish so you get a just see a, there you, are, you can see it moving across you get that sort of polished reflection moving across so there it is in pristine condition ready to run at 17 miles an hour amazing so there we are so we'll stop that there for the moment one of the aspects which I wanted to stress whenever you're going to start uh, a new project, a new modeling project, is to get as much information as you possibly can, plus the um, textures that you're going to use on the project. Now you may need to add additional textures as you go along, as you discover you're um, missing something, but these are the essentials for the, these are the two that are used on the Brunel uh, Viaduct, wooden viaduct, and this is just simply a scan taken from a book I own, which is all about uh, Brunel's um, timber bridges and viaducts and there was this straightforward diagrammatic representation of QTT2 which is the type of viaduct which I've made and this information combined with photographs is enough to make for me to make the um, uh, to make the uh, viaducts. Now what I was able to do was also to, apart from scanning I took each of these images into GMAX by treating them, separating them out and treating them as a texture and simply putting them on a single plane and you can see here we've got rectangles, we've got curved edges but apart from that there's not anything there that is really complex at all so you need to gather these things together before you begin your project. Uh, switching back to GMAX and to the Brunel Timber Viaduct and the end, mesh spline end Make sure that the screen, when you go to export, make sure the screen is only showing that those elements of the model uh, that you wish to export because you might have, for example, some planes with um, textures on which are plans or diagrams to help you make the model. In fact, it's even better to save the, uh, the, that version of your model and delete them and s save it again as a new version and just export from the new version. When you export, remember we come up to here, click on export and it takes us to whichever folder we are going to export to. So in this case for example it would be my documents folder, trains projects and new models, splines and there it is and that's where we would export it to. But that's only showing the meshes an important part of exporting of course is you've got to make sure the textures go with the meshes and uh, Trains has a way of, uh, sorry GMAX has a way of doing this or have the Trains plugin to GMAX has a way of doing this um, so we can just cancel that there and when we, after we've exported the um, mesh itself we now need to go into utilities and we need to go to this one here resource collector click on that and it gives us an output path now that's not where our mesh is currently stored so we need to browse and it'll bring us up to the directory where our model is stored uh, but it's not where we've exported our model so let's go up to my folder of models go up further and trains, tain built-in models, splines, there it is. And it will follow the path there. That all seems very straightforward, but there is one other final little quirk. Click in that name, use the end button on your keyboard to go to the very end and put in a slice or a slash, whatever you want to call it. That is the top left to bottom right. That's the same as that one there. Okay, but do it Make sure you're right at the end, put in the slice and click on use path and then I often forget to do this, actually tell it to do it, begin right down the bottom here. You click on begin and it doesn't seem to do anything but if you look into the folder then you'll find that the uh, both the textures themselves and the little text files which tells trains how to use them will be added and that's that makes the bundle that is your uh, model 
and so when you come to install it into trains you search for this folder uh, in content manager install uh, this content folder and that will put your um, model into trains and then the fun begins because depending on the version of trains that you have uh, you may have different degrees of error checking and almost invariably there will be errors or it won't show up uh, one thing I've noticed with um, Tane in particular is that Trains in New Era is if we look in here um, the config which tells it the name which we're going to put into is going to appear on those uh, on those menus top right that appear in the train screen sometimes it, they don't appear because for some reason maybe well I've never worked out why but if I remove the space, for example, between Brunel and Viaduct and save it and then install it into trains, that seems to work and it appears like that, which is why there's no space between Brunel and Viaduct in the name listing when we go into trains. So uh, close that. I'm not going to save it. So that gives you an idea. Just, that's just something extra to remember when you're exporting into, uh, into trains.